Hey guys, welcome to my channel. This is OK Gab, and you're in my channel. Welcome, thanks for coming. Come on guys, and make yourself comfortable. So yeah, today I'm gonna be telling you guys about how I made a denim jacket painted. And it's my first time. So boy, if I could do this, you can do it too. I can do it, you can do it. I can do it, you can do it. So don't worry. And if you don't wanna do it, but you want a denim jacket that's painted, you can talk to me. Thank you for coming to my channel, Okay Gabby. This is my first time painting a denim jacket and it actually went 100% perfectly okay. And that is because I did so much research on how to do this. I was looking at videos constantly, like every second of the day, just trying to find out how to do it. And I had so much fun doing it. I bought the right products, I found out how to do it, and I took the time and the patience to make sure everything went out correctly. So. If you want to find out how I did it and that way you can do it too and you can find the right materials and exactly what you're going to need for this project, watch the video. And that's how you're going to get a regular denim jacket into a beautifully expertly done painted denim jacket. So yeah, stay tuned. So first grab something that's denim, a denim without any stretch to be specific because stretching will make your fabric paint crack. So if you, for me, I picked something that I knew wouldn't be missed. This is from middle school and I haven't worn it for years. Now it's time to pick your design. So you can design it this yourself, just draw and do something. But, but for this piece, I decided that I didn't want to take the time to come up with something meaningful to me because that could take hours or days or whatever. Just too much creativity for the moment. I just wanted to paint real quick so I can figure out what I'm doing. So I chose to do an art piece that's already out there. I've seen a lot of people draw denim with art that's already out there. Like a lot of, a lot, a lot, a lot of starry nights. Too many starry nights for me and I was like, you know what? I can't be this basic. I gotta do something else that's slightly on the art ho trend, just off. So I picked Vasily Kandinsky and I think that he's really, really nice. I really love the straight lines. I love the circles, I love the curves. Everything about it is just very, very nice. And also, it's very, very nice to practice with. And I really like the way it looked. Kind of reminded me of a rocket ship in a way. And I felt like putting that on the back of a jacket felt right in some type of way. So here I am getting out my paint and I'm getting ready to paint the entire base white. This is really important after you sketch the outline of your shape because when your base is white, the colors are able to pop effortlessly. This is what I was talking about when I said I didn't like the muddy look. Um, I feel like lots of jackets that are denim, one of the biggest mistakes that commonly happens is that they just look a little muddy for some reason. The jean, the blue of the jean pops out into the blue and that's exactly what I don't want because I feel like it just shows that like it's painted but it wasn't, it wasn't supposed to be painted. All right, so for some reason when I got shipped the golden gak blue, um, it came out already opened, which was not good. You'll see it right here. Um, obviously, I didn't return it because I'm not going to wait a whole whenever to get it back. And it didn't seem like it was anything too much of it leaked out. Like, there was liquid in the package and it was very sticky, but I don't know. I think I'm just going to make do with it. In order to mix GAC glue, you're just going to use one part um, paint and one part GAC glue. Then you're just going to mix it up until it's kind of like a wet yogurt consistency. And then as you paint, the more you do it. Just keep adding one part paint and one part GAC. Painting the base is actually a very, very long process. It's uh, This took me hours. Like Actually, this took me longer than actually painting the colors onto this. I feel like the most important thing is making sure everything is even. And for me, I wanted everything to be also perfectly white. Although, if you put too many um, too many layers of paint on the fabric, it can make it more likely to crack. So what I felt when I figured out towards the middle of painting it white was that watering it down is very good for getting into all of the little cracks within the jean. Because when you thin down the paint, um, it's just able to seep into the to the jean material. Before at the beginning, I kind of just used it without any thinning like besides the gack it was just what it was and it would leave so many little tiny holes where you could see the true color of the chain underneath and it bothered me so much if i were to do this again i would start off with a very thin layer of watered down acrylic paint
Also, every time you wait for one layer to dry, the next layer comes out so much more opaque. So if you're trying to do this in a rush, don't don't paint over wet acrylic. There's no point. It's it's just going to make you do more and more work for no reason. It was pretty easy to work with this paint. So this is like a little like crop top denim jacket and this is my first attempt and it looks so nice. And just to let you guys know, I don't actually have a lot of experience with painting, with acrylic, or anything like that. I just have a good hand-eye coordination, so I was like, I can do this. But let me tell you how I got into this. So this is the design, and it looks very nice. But I'm not a painter, and I'm definitely not a denim painter, at least not before this. So this is very, very interesting. You know what? I had a friend, and he's from my college. I only had like one class, I think, with him, or maybe one or two. I don't know. I think only once, but like we see each other every once in a while on campus, and that's pretty much how I know him. And out of nowhere, after seeing my last YouTube video about making clothes, and I've never made clothes for that either, he pretty much just like asked me, like, hey, like, can you do a painted denim jacket? And he said pretty much like his budget was 200, 250 to $300. So anyway, yeah, he just had an idea. He just wanted to do a project. And he, he actually makes his own shoes, like he colors, he paints his own shoes, but he doesn't want to paint something with so much detail. And so that's why he asked me to do the jacket. So before doing the jacket and whatever, he gave me enough money so I could buy supplies because boy, the supplies are expensive. And instead of like going straight into like the $300 project, I just made a practice version. The same way I kind of made a practice version for the last one, like the, the clothing DIY. So for this one, this was my practice. This is my first attempt. And boy oh boy, it looks so nice. What I wanted for this one was pretty much to find a way to make, to make the color stand out. Because when I was watching other like, I was watching denim tutorials like crazy. So many denim tutorials. Like, I was like, how do you paint on denim? What types of materials do you use? What, what, this and that. Like, I wanted to make sure I get everything high quality and the best of the best because I don't, I don't want it to crack. I don't want it to wash out. And I definitely, definitely didn't want it to look ugly, you know? I want it to be bright and colorful. So, when I was looking at other denim tutorials, just painted denim on Pinterest and Google Images, a lot of times the colors came out muddy. And obviously, I think you don't want it to look muddy unless it's purposeful. So for me, I was like, let me see how graphic I can get it. Like I want the blacks to be black, I want the whites to be white, I want the blues to be blue. Like, you know, whatever the color is, it's gotta be. Because I just I just like that graphic look on the denim when I was looking at tutorials. I also like really love the flowers. The flowers look so beautiful. But definitely I wanted to stray completely away from anything that just made it look like it was done by someone who didn't know what they were doing, which is me. So, I'm trying to cover up all of the beginner, anything that looked slightly beginner-like. That's why I was in these tutorials. Some of them just came out muddy, and that's kind of what bothered me. Either it was being too muddy, or like the lines weren't sharp. They were kind of faded or just blurred in a way. And that's just not what I look for, you know? And I don't think that's what most people look for when you look into a jacket, unless they want that like rustic look, or I don't know, kind of like a lived in look. I have no idea. But anyway, so yeah, so I did some research. The products I used. So for the first one, I used is Amsterdam Acrylics. And it's really hard to like read the descriptions of um, paints online for some reason. When I was looking at Amsterdam Acrylics, like the description never showed up. But, let me show you what they look like. So these are Amsterdam acrylics. And these acrylics on the box, I already threw it away because the box is crap, but anyway, on the box, it pretty much says that like, these acrylics will last very long and they will avoid fading in the sunlight. And that's pretty perfect because boy oh boy, if you're wearing paint on your back, obviously you're gonna be in the sun. Hey guys, I found something out. If you get a big glop of paint on your jean, somewhere where you don't want it to be, you can just immediately get a wet napkin and rub the heck out of it and it will come out. As you can see right here. All right, so once you get to this point, you're pretty much finished doing the base. You're gonna wanna sketch your sketch on top of the white all again. 
And when you do this, just draw very, very lightly. And then the other thing that you need is gonna be a fabric medium. So this is my fabric medium. It's called the GAC 900. <laughs> and I use this because 1000, this is 1000 used it and his stuff always looks beautiful and he's done multiple like denim drawings or de denim paintings. But the only issue I have with this is number one, when I bought it, it came open, which is an Amazon issue, I guess, or some type of packaging issue. I'm not into that, but besides that, it also contains formaldehyde. This is what it looks like. Let's see. No, it won't show you. So anyway, it contains, so it contains formaldehyde, which is a chemical known to cause cancer in the state of California. But I already bought it, it was like $16, I think. And I didn't want to wait a entire week to get it back from Amazon. So I ended up using it, but in the future, if I do more of these, which I'm already probably doing another one of these for a different client, I might change. But because I know it's good, and because I know as long as I'm in a ventilated place and I'm sniffing and eating this type of stuff, I'm probably gonna be safe. I just don't understand why only California believes this is for cancer. So yeah, it doesn't come out glossy, even though it says glossy. Besides that, it thins out the paint, which is really, really good because Obviously, with such a thick canvas, it's kind of hard to make very precise details, especially if your paint is super thick. And so by using this to thin down the acrylic, you have to usually put half, acrylic, half of this, and um, it makes it a lot easier to do. Oh! I also got the Princeton Select Paint Set. That's really weird to say. Select Artist Medium Mix. So this is the value set. Imagine that is inside the package. Um, and these are the brushes I actually did not use any of the thin brushes. I only used this brush and another thinner flat brush. And uh, yeah. But pretty much this is for acrylic, watercolor, and oil. And the reason why I got this was actually because one of these brushes are size number one. And at the blog I was looking at, they said that's the best size for details. And for the design that I was doing, I actually didn't need that. This, these flat brushes are so good at making straight lines. Like, let me tell you, you don't even need a ruler. No, just kidding. You'll, you'll probably need a ruler for your sketch. But once you got that down, like doing straight lines is no problem. At least for me, I, I did not have any issue. Even these skinny, thin ones. That was so easy for me to do. And I really didn't think, I thought that was gonna be tough, which is why I picked this design. I picked this design specifically because it's circles and lines. Now I was like, if I can't get those down, what else can I do? So anyway, that was a pretty good practice painting for just understanding how to use acrylic and how to use brushes and all of this. So yeah. So now, now, now that I've finished telling you guys why I'm doing this, you get to see the results. I really like the way it came out. Honestly, I feel like it's a little bit too colorful. It reminds me of Adventure Time, but it's okay. In order to see how big this jacket is, I put my hand down. Okay, this is me watching a jogger at 6 a.m. because I was too scared to be uh, alone doing this. Okay guys, so for this part of the video, it was really awkward to film. I went out at like 6 a.m. in the morning to go get this so that way no one would watch me, but there were still people around. So have fun uh, watching me not even get the back of my jacket because I kept looking back at the camera to make sure I was in the shot. So just a whole bunch of side profiles that really don't do anything. But I look cute in them, so there's that. Hey guys, just wanted to show you how I messed up my hair. And I was only out there for like 15, 30 minutes. Do you see that? Oh, whatever. 